some fighters. Here comes a new challenger. In this video, we'll show you how to use Unity's particle system to quickly and easily make it hit impact effect. Along with the hit impact, we can also use the same techniques to make many different kinds of effects, such as gun muzzle flashes, sword slashes, an RPG spell effect, and many other kind of particle effects that quickly appear then disappear in your game. To make this effect, we simply need the particle system and a few sprites, which you can create on your own or use the link in the description to download all the free sprites we created and used in this video for this effect. Let's begin by right clicking in our hierarchy and under effects, we'll find and click particle system. We'll see when we do this, Unity creates a game object with a particle system component. And we'll name our new system hit particle effect. First, let's go to our emission settings within our particle system component. And let's change our rate over time to zero and click our plus button to add an emission burst. By doing this, we can see that instead of our particles constantly coming out of our emitter, all of our particles are emitted at once. The amount of particles that are emitted are based on our count. So let's change our count from 30 to one. And let's also uncheck our particle system shape option, which can control the direction and way that our particle is being emitted. Next, let's adjust our starting speed from five to zero. We can see by doing this, our particle no longer moves up and stays in its starting location throughout its lifetime. We'll next change our duration from five to 0.7 and our starting lifetime from five to 0.12. Doing this, we can now see our particle appears and then quickly disappears. Lastly, we want to change our starting size from 1 to 1.5. The particle tab in our scene view can allow us to stop, pause, and reset our particle system within our editor. It will also allow us to see our particle system using different playback speeds, as well as the particle system's playback time. With our particle system pause, by left clicking and dragging over the playback time, we can scroll through our particle system and see how it displays at different points during its lifetime. Next, let's enable the particle size over lifetime setting. And we'll adjust our curve so a particle starts small, then grows larger throughout its lifetime on screen. And to make our particle appear as it's quickly fading away, rather than simply disappearing from our player's screen, let's adjust our color over lifetime setting. By clicking its gradient tab, we can bring up its gradient editor. By moving our gradient arrows, we can adjust how and when the gradient blend appears. Clicking the bottom arrow will allow us to adjust and set the gradient's color while clicking the top arrow will allow us to adjust and set its alpha. By clicking the empty space along the top and bottom of our gradient, we can create a new arrow, which we can use to add or adjust the gradient's color or alpha. So let's adjust our gradient so that our particle is transparent at the end and beginning of its lifetime. Next, let's add our hit effect sprite to our particle. 
To do this, we'll need to create and use a new particle material. So let's right click in our project window and under create, we'll select material. With our new material selected within the inspector, we'll click our shader drop down and under particles, we'll select standard unlit. And let's add our hit sprite one into our albedo map. With our hit particle effect selected, let's add our new material under the render settings. We can see now our particle sprite is a sprite of our hit material. However, it still has a black background that can be found in our image texture. To fix this, we want to select our material and under our render mode, we want to change opaque to additive. At this point, we can now adjust our color mode and choose between multiply, overlay, and color. And we can also add our hit texture into our emission. And to adjust the color of our hit particle, instead of adjusting the color tint or the emission tint within our material, we can simply adjust the color of our particle system starting color. Since we only want this effect to happen once per particle system, Lastly, we want to uncheck loop, and then we want to change our starting rotation from constant to random between two constants. We can do this by clicking the arrow to the right of the value, then selecting random between two constants. For our values, we're going to use zero and 180 degrees. This will allow our particle to appear different ways each time that it spawns on screen. We'll need to next make another particle system for our next overlaying effect. But since many of our values will be the same as this particle system, instead of starting from scratch, let's simply use Control D to duplicate our new particle system and place our new game object as a child of our first particle system. Let's start by creating another particle material for our second hit sprite and place that material in the render material value of our new particle system. Next, let's adjust our max particle size, which can be found in the render section of our particle system from 0.5 to 2. And let's also do this for our original particle system as well. For our new particle system, we simply want to change our starting size from 1.5 to 2 and the second constant of our starting rotation from 180 degrees to 600 degrees. Let's also enable our rotation over lifetime and we're going to set our angular velocity to 600. From this point, we can make any small tweaks that we feel need to be placed within our secondary hit particle system. With that complete, let's create another secondary particle system that we'll use to create a small hit particle spark effect after the impact of the hit. Let's duplicate our second particle hit effect and let's remove our material and instead use our default particle material.
And under our particles emission setting, let's change our count from 1 to 80. Let's also change our intervals from 0.01 to 0.015. Let's next change the second constant of our starting rotation from 600 to 360 degrees and our starting size from 2 to 0.05. Let's set our starting speed as well as our starting lifetime to random between two constants. And for our starting speed, we use the values of 20 and 5. And for our starting lifetime, we use the starting values of 0.1 and 0.15. And let's also enable shape for our emission. And we'll adjust that from a cone to a sphere. And we'll also need to decrease the size of our radius. Next, let's disable our size over lifetime setting and we'll enable our size by speed. Let's also disable rotate over lifetime and we want to enable our particle system trails. At the moment, our particle system trails appear as purple lines that appear to connect our emitter to the spawn particles in our scene. The reason for this is we need to add a material in our render settings for our new particle trails. To do this, we can simply go in our render setting and under our main material, you'll see an empty material slot for our trails material. So let's add our default particle material into the empty trails material slot. Under the material settings, let's also change our render mode from billboard to stretch billboard. And with our stretch billboard render mode now selected, by adjusting the length scale, we can now adjust the length of our particles. Additionally, by clicking our trail settings dropdown, we can also adjust how our trail appears and acts on screen. At this point, we can see, by using Unity's particle system and only a couple sprites, we're able to make a convincing hit impact effect that we can easily adjust to use in many different games and scenarios. With that said, let's use the techniques we've learned to add a few more dynamic elements to our hit effect.
Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, interviews, and free game asset giveaways.